Training today, I am probably going to do a bodyweight session. My knees are hurting a bit, to be honest, and my hips. So, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do some mobilization, a little bit of stretching, see how I do. If that's too much, if it hurts too much, then I'm going to do another weightlifting session for the upper body. So, push day in terms of you know bench pressing and stuff like that. Because yeah, even though I want to do bodyweight, if my knees, for example, my left knee is hurting just a little bit there's no need to now try to push through and say oh I have a bodyweight session so let's do one but it's gonna be very ineffective because I really can't do what I want to do but yeah I mean that's that's just the gist of it right now this big guy wants to go in here and that dude is helping him to do that <laughs> the guy in the car <laughs> shit I didn't know that was this, by the way, was one of my clients here on the bike. <laughs> he didn't realize it was me. Because the funny thing is, the guys see me in the gym without wearing a hat. You know, most of my clients don't recognize who I am when I walk around like this. Which is really weird because normally I should do. But anyway, so now you know the gist of it. I'm gonna try to do body weight. If not, I'm gonna hit the weights. But we're gonna train, that's for sure. Back in the gym. Yeah, got changed. I'm ready now. It is uh, 7 55. You know, this is a funny thing. In English and German, you say the numbers in the opposite way or the wrong way. So it's 5 and 6, like here, 5 and 6 or 5 and 7. You say 57. But in German, you, you say 75. You say 57. So you start with the 7 first and then you say the 5. And in English, you say the 5 first and then the 7. So that's why as a child I was, because I lived in Asia, I was always confused. I always said numbers wrong. And everyone thought I'm a bit bala bala, like a bit, you know, nuts. But if you grow up as a child and everything is, you know, the other way around, you're like, eh, what? Why is it not everywhere? It's the same thing like a calculator. Calculator and the phone number. When you have a look at calculator numbers, it starts at the bottom, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the other way, it starts from the top to, to the bottom, the numbering. Just have a look at your calculator and your phone dial. It looks different. Right, I'm back in Crush and I'm gonna have a porridge with honey. I'm not gonna eat all of it, just just a little bit. And another double espresso and some water. Uh, that should be good for, for my workout. Now the thing is, it's not ideal. I know because so I'm gonna train straight after or maybe I've got like 10 minute break. Ideally, when you eat something like this, you should leave at least 30 minutes to even an hour for your body to fully absorb the food. 
but I feel like I need a bit of energy, that's why I'm eating this now. And then we're gonna rock the session. Let's try this baby here. There you go. So. Not too bad. All right, I need to get ready. And first things first, I need to change batteries in my uh, GoPro camera. So we'll do that. The problem is I don't know which one is charged. It's a bummer. And this might take some time, so don't worry. I'll do something else. I'll come back to you. the room everyone you can see I'm sweaty sweaty Betty yes yeah, so I finished my workout now it is 11 38 I had a client at 12 30 he cancelled because his meeting ran over or something so I've got now some time because Nicole is here like I told you I'm trying to take more time to spend with her um, so we're gonna go out and I need to buy a new stand for this camera like I don't know what you call it, a gimbal thing whatever yeah that was that it was quite you know this thing at the end that's called Schweizer where you're you've got your hands at the bottom and then you're gonna try to all the way up into a handstand. I was able to do that, not even that long ago, like a year ago. Now you can see I'm struggling. A lot of it has to do with my wrists are hurting a bit, but also the other thing is actually really knowing which muscle to engage and also your shoulder strength needs to be really there because as you can see, I'm really, my, my shoulder is pointing forward and then at the very end you're gonna go into a handstand. But yeah, as I didn't manage to do it, hopefully next time. But that was one thing I was training to do. I want to be sitting on the floor in nearly a split position, have my hands between my legs and then push myself all the way up into a handstand. That's one of my goals in this whole four months journey. So I have to work on that, obviously. I'm gonna get showered now. This is Hyde Park, where we are here right now. <laughs> the thing is in Hyde Park, there's some water. I'm gonna go to see. The water. The German water. Boom, shake the room, guys. I'm back home, as you can see. The reason being is that basically all my clients in the afternoon cancelled and I decided to go home early. 
So I trained today in my bodyweight session, which you've already seen, and I did a little bit longer than normal. So I did around one hour and 15, one hour and 20 minutes. I tried some new stuff, which you also see on the video. So that was sufficient for me today. Now I'm back home and I remember there was some question I wanted to answer. So let me just get that question up quickly and then I'm gonna be back. All right, took some time to find the question <laughs> and I actually had some dinner in between. So the question is, let me show you. Okay figure it out and zoom it in so taekwondo kwan kicker taekwondo kicker is asking i don't understand isometric stretching how to contract and relax muscle into middle split and feel the gluteus minimus become tight so let me answer that question <laughs> let me just close the door otherwise you won't hear anything i am talking about maybe the light out is better yeah, this is better, better light. Okay, there you go. This uh, lighting setting is good and I need to kneel on the chair like this. What was the question? <laughs> this was a long day. So, take eight, isometric stretching. I'm gonna try to explain it now for good. It is an advanced stretching technique and <laughs> The reason why it's advanced is also because you can get injured really, really easily. Now, your muscle has a couple of things built into it to protect itself. One is called your muscle spindle, which sits normally in the middle of your muscle. Let's tense the muscle a little bit, right? So in the middle of your muscle is your muscle spindle. And then at the end where your muscle connects to the bone is a tendon. And within the tendon is something called the GTI, the Golgi Tendon Organ. Now these two things, they play a really important role for this uh, isometric stretching technique. I'm gonna try to explain this as best possible without you having too many question marks in your head. Now, why do you have these two, the muscle spindle and the, the GTI, the Golgi tendon organ? What do they really do? The muscle spindle measures the lengthening of your muscle and, and the speed of the lengthening. Why is this important? Because it wants to protect your muscle. So if your arm all of a sudden drops open really really quickly or someone throws you a ball and it's too heavy and you're trying to catch it your muscle spindle will tell your muscle you know there's something really heavy try to try to hold it because otherwise your muscle is basically going to rip off right and this is called the stretch reflex so if someone throws you a ball and you catch the ball all of a sudden your arm starts lengthening really fast because you don't know how heavy it is and the stretch reflex is basically telling your your muscle here your biceps hey, listen, there's something really, really heavy about to rip off, so start tensing your muscle. That's the reflex. Now, let's assume the ball you're catching is too heavy. So you're catching the ball. Let's say I'm catching, catching this handy, right? That really worked well. <laughs> so I catch the handy, and then let's assume this is a ball. I catch it, and my muscle hold against it. Now let's assume this is a gold bar, and I catch it. I can't hold it, so all of a sudden my arm goes down, 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 and I release, and it drops to the floor. That's when your GTI kicks in and says, well, look, muscle, it's fine hold, trying to hold against it as much as you can, but at one point, if you keep holding, you know, I'm gonna rip off. That's why the GTI will override your muscle spindle. So the Golgi tendon organ, around about six seconds. That's why when you catch something which is too heavy, you're, you're about to hold it and you're like, you're like, gonna lick it on, and then it drops to the floor. It's around six seconds when the GTI kicks in and says, muscle you can't do it that's why i'm gonna override you and release so the, the gti will say to your muscle just lengthen and let it go this is in a nutshell what happens in your muscle now why is this all important with this stretching technique now here comes the crux so the isometric stretching is also referred to as the contract hold release stretch method what does that mean so I'll show you as an example for, for with your legs. So we want to stretch our hamstring. How would that work? If I do it by myself, I would grab my leg and now comes the thing. So I pull it to the point where I can't, let's say this is the maximum I can stretch. Now, what you will do is you're going to hold your leg and contract. Contract means that this muscle at the back, which the one we're stretching, contracts. So it tries to push that way, but I'm going to hold against it then you're going to hold it so that's why the h is there hold it and then you're going to release means you can just let go and then you stretch again and you're going to see the whole way this works is in terms of seconds most of the time 
is you contract, hold it for 30 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds, and then you release it, and within a time frame of around 10 seconds, you've got to then pull it towards you. And what you're doing, you're tricking your muscle spindle because your muscle spindle would say, well, look, your muscle is already at the extreme stretch. Now you wanna even stretch it further. And this technique goes around that safety measure of your body, which is your muscle spindle and the, and the GTI. And here is why this is the advanced stretching technique. Because when you do this with a partner, so let's assume there's someone lying on the floor, I'm holding his leg, and you know, he's stretching. I say to him, well, okay, press against my hand. He's doing it. I'm like, okay, release. Okay, now I stretch and I keep stretching to a point where I actually might injure or actually rip some of your muscle fibers because now you understand, right? So I've got the biceps. I got the freaking biceps. <laughs> <laughs> the muscle spindle in the bicep says, okay, now this is the furthest I can stretch. Don't stretch further, but because we did this CHRS method or the isometric stretching method, now we trick the muscle because we've got this window of around um, you know, 10 seconds to even stretch it further. You can do this even more often. So after we've done it the first time, we can now say, hold, okay, let's do it again. Stretch again. Okay, we do the, the, the whole thing again. So hold against it. He, he releases, I stretch again. So we can go even further. And that's why this technique is so powerful. But again, if you have, you have no experience of how far you can do this, then you might even rip some muscle fibers or, or, or damage your muscle by doing it. That's why it's one stretching method and you should only do it with someone who has experience in doing it. And yeah, I know this is a really long explanation, but listen guys, this is really important because you might hear these advanced stretching techniques and think, oh yeah, that's great, that's, I, I will learn the splits faster and stuff. Yes, you will, but only if you know what you're doing. So, I mean, I've done it now. I mean, I learned it in university and how to do it because it's also a bit of a feeling thing. The best way is martial arts, to understand your limits. So for example, in judo, you've got these arm locks, right? You got an arm lock from someone. If you have never felt an arm lock yourself and you lie down and say, okay, I'll do an arm lock. And you know, in, in judo, you hold the arm lock and the other person taps on the floor. He taps out, so to speak, saying, you know, it's too much. You will, as the person who's holding the arm lock, not understand why the other one is hitting on the floor because you're like, well, I don't, I don't really put any pressure on your arm yet. And the other person already going crazy on the, on the floor, hitting on the floor, like, oh my God, oh my God, it's hurting, hurting. Now it's your turn. You lie there. He gets you into the arm lock and you're like, fucking shit, that's really hurting because you're hitting on the floor. This is the same thing with the stretch. If you're the person stretching someone else and you have never felt what it means like doing this whole isometric stretching, then it's really difficult or really dangerous for the person who's like, well, you know, I can push you further. You, you're not at your limit yet and don't cry around and be a baby. That's not how this works. Stretching, you have to be really, really careful because you can injure yourself long term. And once you rip the muscle or you, you injured yourself in stretching, you will fall back in training for a really long period of time because recovering that kind of injury, it's, it's like a blauer fleck in German. If you just got a bruise or something and then two, two days later you're hitting the gym again, if you injure yourself with that kind of stretching, you're out, basically. I know this is a long explanation again, I can see the time running over, but sometimes I wanna take my time and make sure that you guys get the gist of this. And I hope this whole thing, uh, you know, it, it sunk in a little bit. If you have questions, leave a question in the comment box below because I know this might be of interest to a couple of you guys when you do the stretching or when you, when you listen to stuff what I'm saying. So yeah, again, leave a comment in the comment box below. I'll see you guys tomorrow, today uh, 12, I think. Thanks for watching. Question is, what is it? And you know, I, I don't understand the concept. That's the question. Now, the backlighting is that is that shit? Is that crap? <laughs> now, the idea behind it is that. <laughs> right. I think I finally got the setup done. Pretty simple. Take five. It doesn't want to, you know, rip or it, it measures that tension. So. <clears throat> what happened <laughs> is it advanced it is an advanced stretch I'm, I'm quite tired i'm like me, 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 me. this is gonna be the, the funniest explanation you'll ever hear from me on youtube <laughs> no way does it want to cry this is basically my sixth take explaining this 
Hang on, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get through this all together, so hang on here. <clears throat> so what we're trying to, <laughs> to explain... <laughs> this can't be this hard, can it? So I managed to record this seven times already. So this is the seventh time and this is my last time, I promise. So isometric stretching. What is isometric stretching? <laughs> I just, I don't know, I, this is so ridiculous. Basically, just <laughs> Google it and then you know. Uh.